Hi guys. Welcome to my channel. Before we get started. Make sure to hit that like button and. Also subscribe to my channel. So make sure to watch the full video. Since their debut, electric vehicle technology has improved quickly, and there are now a wide variety of battery and plug-in hybrid electric vehicle options on the market. But what are the benefits of electric cars and how do they operate exactly? Consider the internal combustion engine, or ICE, as the legacy form of vehicle technology. The combustion engine that powers this car can only be powered by gasoline. The technology is conventional, well-known, and trustworthy, but it uses a lot of gasoline, which can be expensive in various ways. Vehicle Technology Introducing the drivetrain for electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, or EVs, are propelled by electromagnetic radiation in contrast to internal combustion technology, which employs combustion and pressure to propel a vehicle. These automobiles have an electric motor that is powered by electricity, often kept in a battery. Battery electric cars, also known as BEVs, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, or HEVs, and hybrid electric vehicles all make use of electric vehicle, EV, technology. The first EV to enter the market for contemporary vehicles was the hybrid electric vehicle. Due to their higher fuel efficiency, HEVs like the Toyota Prius and Lexus CT200 are well-liked. In addition to an electric motor and a small battery to store electricity, these vehicles also feature an internal combustion engine. The electric motor is also powered by the vehicle's battery, even though a HEV only uses gasoline as fuel. Regenerative braking is primarily responsible for recapturing energy that is used to power the battery. An HEV is more fuel efficient than a typical ICE vehicle due in part to the utilization of collected energy. The plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is powered by both an internal combustion engine and an electric motor, just like the original hybrid. The electric vehicle supply equipment, or EVs, can be used to charge a FEV significantly bigger battery pack. This makes it possible for the car to function in all electric mode, during which the car is propelled solely by its electric motor, until the battery is nearly completely exhausted. Until the fuel in the gas tank runs out, the car is currently in hybrid mode. The vehicle's fuel and energy efficiency improves when the battery is bigger and it is driven solely on electricity. This decreases exhaust emissions. Battery electric vehicles are the last generation of electric vehicles. The battery and electric motor are the only sources of power for this vehicle, which lacks an internal combustion engine. BEVs are electric vehicles that solely utilize EVSs to charge them. In comparison to other vehicle kinds, a BEV has the largest battery. It also has the lowest tailpipe emissions and is the most energy efficient. Car ranges. The range that these vehicles can cover varies as a result of the many technologies that each vehicle type integrates. ICE vehicles, which run solely on gasoline, can normally travel 350 to 450 miles on a single tank of fuel. Hybrid electric vehicles can normally drive 550 to 700 miles and use gasoline more effectively. They do have an electric motor and battery, but the battery is only powered during a typical drive cycle and is not their main source of propulsion. However, this little battery is mostly responsible for the hybrid's greater range and fuel efficiency, thanks to regenerative braking. A plug-in hybrid electric vehicle's larger battery allows it to function in all-electric mode, with a usual range of 20 to 40 miles. FEVs are built for simple overnight recharging using a standard outlet and average daily commutes. For a full vehicle range of 450 to 550 miles after the majority of the battery's energy has been used up, the car can operate in hybrid mode for longer distances, running on gas and using a small portion of the battery to support the electric drivetrain. The simplest and most effective drivetrain, with a typical battery range of 150 to 300 miles, is found in battery electric vehicles. BEVs can be charged overnight using a typical level 2 domestic EVs. Braking modes for EVs. Regenerative braking is the feature that stands out the most between driving an electric car and an ordinary internal combustion engine car. By operating the electric motor in reverse, regenerative braking uses electromagnetic force to apply a braking force. This recharges the battery while recovering some of the kinetic energy of the car. Specific driving modes with varying degrees of regenerative braking are available on some electric vehicle models. In typical driving situations, an EV like the Tesla Model S activates regenerative braking to slow down the car when the driver releases the accelerator. The standard setting offers the most regenerative braking power, it recovers the most energy and minimizes brake wear. Alternately, the low setting has a weaker regenerative braking system that recovers less energy but enables the car to coast further than in standard mode. 
When the car is stopped or moving at very low speeds, an AV like the Tesla Model S has settings that control how the braking systems behave. The creep mode is made to look like an ICE vehicle as it idles. When stopped or moving slowly with the driver's foot off the accelerator, it disengages regenerative braking and applies a small amount of motor torque. When looking for a spot to park, this feature is most frequently used in parking lots. Another option is the roll setting, which does not apply motor torque but instead disengages regenerative braking at low speeds. As if the car were in neutral, this permits the car to roll freely. Last but not least, the hold setting keeps regenerative braking active until the car comes to a complete stop, which reduces brake wear and generates the most energy that can be recovered. The friction brakes are also automatically activated by this feature when the car is completely stopped, keeping it in place until the driver presses the brake or the accelerator. The brake pedal is always accessible and functions exactly like it would in a regular car during an emergency stop in all of these braking modes. Different vehicle makes and models have different regenerative braking modes. The Chevrolet Bolt, for instance, uses a system that involves depressing paddles next to the steering wheel to maximize regenerative braking and bring the car to a complete stop. The Nissan Leaf, meanwhile, offers three levels of regenerative braking modes. Drivetrain modes for FEVs. FEVs can use regenerative braking and can operate in a variety of driving modes because they have two totally distinct drivetrains, combustion and electric. The Ford Fusion, for instance, has three driving modes with distinct purposes, Auto F, EV now, and EV later. The Auto EV mode makes the best use of both fuel sources by integrating an optimized mix of battery energy and gasoline. For faster highway speeds, this mode is ideal. In the EV now mode, the battery and electric drivetrain are completely utilized, producing zero tailpipe emissions, much like a battery electric car. The EV later mode, lastly, preserves battery power for use later in a journey. For journeys that involve both highway and in-town travel, this mode is ideal. At highway speeds, the combustion engine is used, and energy is stored for use in EV now mode later in the journey, when the electric drivetrain is at its most effective. EVs types. Electric vehicle supply equipment, also known as EVs, is used by all plug-in electric vehicles, including battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids, to recharge their batteries. Three EVs types are prevalent. The first kind of charger is known as a level one charger. These devices typically consist of portable cord sets that charge at a rate of 2 to 5 miles per hour from a typical 120 volt household outlet. The daily range that this type of charger can supply to a vehicle is constrained, but it is the most affordable. Because of this, FEVs with smaller batteries or BEV drivers who have a short daily commute to work tend to use this application the most. Using 208 or 240 volts, level 2 chargers deliver more power per hour. These chargers are more expensive and typically installed as wall-mounted or permanent pedestal-style units. Each hour of charging gives a vehicle between 10 and 20 miles of range. For both workplace and public charging stations, this is the most typical use for long-range BEVs. Last but not least, a DC fast charger is the priciest type of charger but gives the vehicle the most energy per hour. A typical DC fast charger can extend range by 60 to 80 miles in about 20 minutes. These chargers, which are most frequently found along highways, are only advised to support sporadic long-distance trips because continuously charging the battery at such a high power level can cause battery degradation. Energy Consumption Reporting Reporting energy usage for Federal Fleet Vehicles is necessary for operation. For ICE vehicles, the fuel card provider, which keeps track of each fueling transaction, is typically where fuel consumption is reported. On-site and off-site wall outlets, basic EVS units, and networked units can all be used to charge electric vehicles, though. Even though many of these charging stations have the ability to record and store transactions, the most affordable EVS might not. So, using telematics is advised as a way to calculate energy consumption, which is expressed in kilowatt hours. Kilowatt hours are typically recorded by telematics platforms, which then show them on an online dashboard. A fleet manager can choose a custom date range to determine a vehicle's kilowatt hour usage over a specific time period. This time period can be used to apply to every electric vehicle in a fleet, providing the data required for yearly federal fleet reporting. An additional reliable source of data on energy use is a networked or smart EVS unit. These devices frequently have online dashboards, which are telematics-like and record vehicle energy consumption. Many times, smartphone applications can also access these dashboards. The primary EVS unit's data, however, might not be complete if the car occasionally charges on a different network. 
To supplement the data from their primary EFS unit in this situation, drivers should attempt to gather information from off-site charging stations. Energy usage or vehicle efficiency are frequently shown on the physical dashboard of the cars themselves. Federal fleet managers must check the kilowatt hours used annually to complete their fast reports because some vehicle models display lifetime energy consumption. Fleet managers must divide the annual vehicle miles driven by the efficiency of the vehicle to determine the annual energy consumed if the vehicle's lifetime efficiency is specified in miles per kilowatt hour. Miles divided by kWh equals annual kWh. If all else fails, there is a straightforward method to calculate vehicle energy consumption provided by the Federal Energy Management Program of the U.S. Department of Energy. Take the vehicle's annual mileage reading and multiply it by the fuel economy of the vehicle, which is displayed on fueleconomy.gov in kilowatt hours per mile. Annual miles times kWh slash mile equals annual kWh. Conclusion You are now prepared to drive your new electric vehicle because you are knowledgeable about the different types of EVs, their ranges, regenerative braking systems, drivetrains, and charging. So, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Use the comment section below to tell us what you think about the video. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of all the latest videos.